Welcome to Sugarland, Texas. We are live at Constellation Field, home of your Sugarland Skeeters. More live Atlantic League baseball action tonight as the Sugarland Skeeters take on the Lancaster Barnstormers in game two of a three game series. Five nothing Skeeters to the bottom of the fourth, but first, Jessica Munoz. Thanks, Greg, and I'm joined by a very special guest, Eric Chow, who is a program coordinator for the Life, Light and Salt Association. You guys had a special pregame ceremony. What were you guys doing out here tonight? All right, so tonight we had our, our handbell performance led by Lisa Cow. We have all of our students for uh, Light and Salt Special Needs Caring Center, and that's what we were doing. We were, put, we were doing You Raise Me Up. And it was very well done. How many kids are in your organization? So we have 11 students, uh, we give or take, you know, we, we have some more during the summer, but then we also have, so 11 usually is our main count. And what is the Light and Salt Association for people that don't know? So the Light and Salt Association is a Christian-based nonprofit that started a long time ago, back in 1997, 98, and they support both cancer support as well as special needs. So we're here representing the special needs part of it right now. In addition to the bells that you guys did today, is there any other groups that you have at the Light and Salt Association? So that's our main, uh, that's our main group for our special needs. And if people want to find out more about the organization, where can they go? Oh, no problem. You can just go down. We're right by the main entrance there. And you're more than willing to stop by, get some information, check us out. And how did you get involved with the organization? So uh, I, I came down in November of last year. I was invited here by my uncle who's on the board of directors and he wanted me to check this place out and be a project coordinator and I was no problem. And is this the biggest crowd that your group's played in front of? Oh, this is most definitely the biggest crowd. <laughs> Our students were like, oh my God, you know? But even though we were kind of, you know, not that many people were here as in the beginning, it was still big enough for them to give them a great experience. And what does this do for them? Does it boost their confidence? Most definitely. It gets them out there in front of a group that probably would never have known, you know, we do this. And it gets them public awareness as to the day-to-day -day issues that they face. And we also see some of them on the big screen there as we pan around. Very cool, Eric. Thanks for taking some time to join me. We're going to send it back up to you guys in the booth. Thank you very much. Yeah, we had some entertainment from the uh, Bell group. Uh, well, they had a violin in that group. And, of course, uh, the uh, second pregame that we saw a picture of, those were the senior citizens that did the national anthem. There's a strike on the first pitch to Dominguez, who uh, popped foul out to third baseman Bell in the second inning. Always enjoy the violin. It is so difficult to play. Do you try it? Well, I only play it for sob stories, generally. Oh, okay. It's an invisible violin. It's a little one. Air violin. <laughs> I like to call air violin. Air violin. No balls and two strikes. So if you ever look up to his apartment over across the way in the nighttime with the lights are on and he's walking through the place, he's not having a problem. He's pretending to play the violin. If you're watching me do that, I want to wonder why you're stalking me. Mm -hmm. One ball and two strikes.